so hello everyone good morning good afternoon i, I can say and uh, yes good early morning to uh, asia pacific people so i am akriti shrivastava and i am presenting on the topic of azure vulnerability test bank that is easy go uh, so let's proceed further uh, before we proceed with uh, the slides uh, there is one thing which i want to tell that the views and opinions expressed in this presentation are my own and they don't represent my organization's uh, view and who am i as alex has already introduced me but still uh, let me do the favor because i have written this in slide <laughs> i am easy ppt certified security enthusiast and i have experience of 8 years uh, i have spoken at various multiple conference whether they were internal adobe conference or they were externals as well uh, some of uh, one, to name one is cs3 htlm uh, that was for iot and uh, i've been responsible for various uh, uh, i've been responsible for various disclosures uh, to name one is i hold uh, google hall of fame and i have been a blogger but uh, have been a little bit dormant since uh, some time but uh, yeah i will start it again so coming to the agenda what we are going to discuss in this uh, easy go talk so it's like uh, we will be first talking about the threats that lead, lead to a compromise of azure and then we will be introducing easy go and we will be telling about the benefits what are the benefits we will be venturing in depth of easy go roadmap and action items so uh, before i go ahead with further slides i just want to uh, tell that why the agenda is designed like this so first portion will be telling that why we will be requiring easy go that's um, we will be elaborating on that why there was need to develop such thing and then we will be telling what is easy go and after that we will be telling how it is going to benefit our audience uh, our security community or i can say devsecops community and then we will be seeing uh, in depth of uh, easy go we will be seeing uh, demos so we have uh, three scenario demos and apart from that we have one introductory demo and uh, where we are and what is our roadmap for easy go that also we will be going through uh, then yes obviously we have action items so starting with the very first uh, point that azure is a market leader and a proof we can see here in this chart uh, we can see that this is the worldwide market share and microsoft and amazon are the biggest player here and microsoft holds about 18% of the worldwide market share and another amazing thing which i found on net was that uh, if you can see this statistics this is again another proof that azure is growing like anything and again it is a big competitor to um, big scale uh, cloud service providers like aws and google cloud and many others as well and you can see this is the current usage uh, i can just uh, enlarge it a bit so it's like current usage is 63% and plan is 6% but this is uh, experimenting is 20% so this is a big proof that yes azure is gaining big boom in the market of um, cloud service provider and yes that comes with a new point that it is coming in radar of adversaries so yes uh, because it is getting more and more used so obviously attackers will be trying to target more um, um the more on the uh, applications or services which are hosted here in azure environment so <clears throat> this is one thing then we will uh, go through some recent breaches that again show uh, that there have been a increase in frequency of attacks on azure environment so first of all uh, we'll we'll pick up this i can so any any guess any guess what it is i know you all will be on mute uh but yes um, you can ping on chatbot uh so this is cosmos cosmos db so it was labeled as chaos db by uh wiz that's a research uh, organization so this vulnerability which was uh, found in azure was um <clears throat> that they were able to uh, get primary key as well as storage token of uh, different customers uh, almost they can say all of the customers i can say uh, in some of the posts i have gone through it was written that almost fortune 500 companies were covered here and uh, this was done by a privilege escalation through their owned 
uh, Jupyter notebook. Through that, they were able to get such sensitive data. And from that, they were able to get into the Cosmos DB of another organizations. Then we have uh, this one. Um, okay, this looks like some thing related to medical. Uh, yes, you, you are correct. If you are thinking such, you are correct. This is ProBase. So ProBase is a UK based firm and it is for, uh, it's uh, related to medical uh, insurance and uh, thing. So the thing was that it uh, attackers were able to get 587,000 uh, records and they were sensitive records. They were about medical check. Have next one in the queue. Any guesses? This is winds windmill. I can say solar winds that has been pretty popular last year. Very pro popular, and um, there were a lot of issue. Uh, I mean, uh, attackers they were able to uh, put malicious code in solar wind system, and through that they were able to get into other companies as well, and they were able to pivot into Microsoft and they gained internal code of Microsoft. So that was, uh, I think they got some code of Azure as well. And using that, they were able to gain uh, AAD privileges, higher privileges and storage token. Um, also they were, and uh, not storage token. I think it was, they were able to forge user tokens there. So, you can see that uh, the there is a heavy increase in the frequency of attacks on Azure environment. So yes, it is need of the R that we should we should become pro. Uh, already we are proactive, but yes, uh, if we want to learn more, uh, if we are beginners, we we should learn more about Azure security. Uh, basically, I can say Azure environment security. So basically, it is a responsibility of client as well. Uh, sometimes uh, we say that cloud service provider, they, they host our data. It's their responsibility to um, keep track of our data. But no, it's responsibility of clients as well that they need to protect their data. Uh, they should not um, put some mis misconfigurations or bad security practices to get it exploited. So uh, what are the threats which we have seen which used to affect Azure environment? So let me take one example, Leap Secret. They have been pretty popular. Uh, okay, I have seen a lot of them and most popular is that infamous HTML source code and this Git commit, this is like pretty popular. Uh, the developers push it into Git and sometimes they put it put into Git commit. So that can be easily uh, found. And if this code is public, then, then it's a very bad um, mess to clean up. Now, second one, guessable reuse default password. Any guess what is this about? Uh, I think, yes, you are able to guess it correct. So Paris, it's related to Paris Hilton's case. She put her default password as her pet's name. So this is one example of that. And then we have another, okay, these are pretty simple passwords, but yes, one thing more, they should not be on sticky notes. That is really bad. Then another one we have is threat affecting Azure environment. We have web application vulnerabilities. Uh, yes, they can be local file inclusion or code execution. Uh, they again bring up issues. And then yes, security misconfiguration as we have seen in case of ProBase. Uh, in case of ProBase, the issue was that they have uh, a public, uh, they, their records were on a blog which had public access. That means anyone, uh, without authentication, they can access that blog. So that's a misconfiguration. So the solution we propose for this is AZGOAT. And AZGOAT, when we talk about that, AZGOAT means that it, it is a playground. It is a playground where you can practice play and you can learn more about Azure uh, vulnerabilities. So we have uh, recently seen that there are uh, many good playgrounds for web and AWS. Uh, to name some, we have a Wasp Juice Shop and we have WebCourt, so they are very good. And uh, to um, to admit it honestly, that yes, I have also learned a lot from them. Uh, so while I started researching about Azure security, I saw that there there is no such I don't know in my knowledge I, there was no such playground and literature uh, about the chaining of attacks that in Azure environment that is also pretty uh, limited. 
So I uh, came up with idea that let's have one uh, playground where we can uh, put up some chaining of attacks, which can help other people who, uh, who were beginners, so they can understand more uh, that how these attacks can work and how they can be leveraged into a uh, total compromise. So how it's going to benefit you? So uh, for now, we are targeting three communities, that is developer, security, and operations. So for developers, it will be for them to understand how insecure coding practices, which are uh, very common, how they can help them, uh, uh, how they can uh, cause um, total compromise of the Azure environment. Uh, so they need to understand what all uh, bad coding practices are there, which can mess up the whole environment. And for security persons, it, it is a boon. They can learn more about the lateral movements, how uh, attackers perform lateral movement in case of Azure environment. Uh, you have to exploit a web application or any function and how you can move into the whole Azure environment that we can uh, know from here and it's for enhancement of security knowledge related to Azure. Then coming to operations. So for operations, I'll just... So for coming to operations, we have... Uh, I mean, we, we have seen an example of misconfiguration there in VLOB. Yes, so this is for operation people to understand how uh, bad uh, configuration practices, misconfiguration, I can say it, it got a raise. <laughs> I should say it got a raise in OVAS top 10, 2021, it moved to A5. So it's very common and yes, we need to learn that how to avoid that in Azure environment. So that will, uh, we can learn from is the easy code for operations. Uh, then venturing in the depth of AZ Goat. So we will be going through the network diagram. Then uh, we will be having an introductory video for it. I should have you know, a demo, not a video. Then we have scenarios, walkthrough, and demo. So when we come to network diagram, diagram of AZ Goat, so this is what we have implemented for. This is what we have implemented for now. Let me just in. Just a second. So if you can see here, these are the few components which we have uh, implemented here. So a uh, user, this will be person who will be using AZ code. So they will, uh, <coughs> they, what they will see in this environment is that a public address is assigned, which is a static address for this particular VM. Uh, we have two VM, Linux VMs, uh, um, uh, which are deployed here. And one is associated with managed identity. And uh, using that, they can query storage account and they can query SQL database. And uh, we have a function app. And uh, using that function app, they can perform some, uh, some uh, like uh, functions like they can uh, print out some details that is here. And uh, this VM, this particular VM is internal in nature. It can't be accessed from outside. And this is also mm, uh, fetching data from this storage account. And this may be storing some important data files. Then uh, we have subscriptions. So for subscriptions, I will be using my personal account. Uh, apart from that, I also have put this here because I will be uh, researching further on subscription exploit. I mean, some scenarios which are related to chaining attacks related to subscription or key vaults and queue storages. So these things, three things are under pro uh, progress. So that is one thing. Uh, let me move to blob storage. Yes, I forgot to tell about blob storages. There are two uh, blob storages. One is public in nature, one is private. Moving to the introductory demo. So first we will be going through the walkthrough of AZ Goat resources. Uh, from network diagram, it may not be much clear what I was talking about. So this is my account. If you can see here, AZ Goat is deployed here. And this is a resource group uh, where I have grouped all of my resources. So if you can see here, all um, SQL server, the SQL server, virtual network, VM, these all are listed here. So this is corporate VM. This is internal in nature. This is, there is no public IP though, though it is written here. There is no public IP. 
and uh, security groups attached here all are present. This is our function app, which we'll, we will be testing. This is that uh, machine, which is uh, open to public. And then we have uh, this uh, <clears throat> um, security groups associated with it. And this is uh, associated with our function, this particular account. So these things we have for now. Uh, let's just open something and show you more about the Sarif machine. So as a Sarif machine is having this DNS name associated with it, and this has a public IP assigned to it. And if we see the uh, networking, so for network security group, uh, we, we have allowed certain ports, but we need to allow this as well for Flask application to run. Uh, so it has a Flask application running, which will help us to run the, uh, the application. <clears throat> so this was the walkthrough of AZ Goat resources. Now set up script. If we have to make all these resources in Azure, it will be a very hectic task. So I am working on these automation scripts. So if you see, this is a copy of the main script, which I will be working, which I'm working on. So uh, we were able to successfully create resource group, virtual network, subnets, uh, yeah, VMs, two VMs we have, we were able to create one private storage account and one public storage account we were able to create. And uh, yes, along with their container and plog file. So they have their data also uploaded there. <clears throat> we have NSG set here. So almost this script is like 80% complete. There are some small changes which I need to make. And plus I need to incorporate uh, SQL servers uh, automation here. Uh, that is one small task. And another is that I need to form a cloud in its script for deploying the application, vulnerable application in the VM. So just for your demo, I'll show a small snippet because running this whole script will definitely take a lot of time. Uh, so I have copied this main.tf here and it will be just um, creating 16 resources. That is two VMs and uh, one storage account with its uh, subnet and resource group and with a public IP, it will be creating that. So uh, let's run this particular script. I'll open my Terraform. Okay, so we need to open the PowerShell for this. And uh, yes, I have already logged into AZ. Um, I mean, I've already performed AZ login here. So I've already have access to this uh, account. And I have installed Terraform 1.8.0 here. And uh, I've already performed an init command on it. So if you need more details how we can do it, you can find it from Microsoft blogs, uh, but just to create it now, uh, let's see the plan. So plan is kind of debug, kind of debugging, uh, compiling, you can say. I mean, very, very, very basic term. It's not compiling, but it's very similar that it will check whether these resources can be formed. Is there any syntax error or something? It will point it out. So it will take some time. It will show, okay, these 16 resources will be formed and this is the list which all are getting formed here. <clears throat> so it has started the plan. So if you can see these all resources are getting, getting created here and what, where, which location they are getting created, what's their name, everything is provided here. So we need to run this script. Okay, I need to move it on. Now we need to create the resources. For that, we will simply run apply. So it will start the creation of uh, resources. It will again take another two minutes. Uh, so just to save your time, we will see how it's working at the back end. Just a second, how do I do it? Okay. Uh, just a second. I'm not
so for this purpose i have created one another account uh, so this is uh, my automation account where it will be creating all these resources let's see if it has populated any resource here so i'm having two accounts here for az code uh, one is for automation and one is for creation of uh, where az code is deployed okay i forgot to do that So let's see what's happening here. We will keep on refreshing. Maybe it will get easy code created here. So if we see on backend, it is showing that it is able to create a resource group with this name. And these are some resources which is, it is trying to create. OK, let's wait for some time. So we are able to get virtual network as well. Subnets, network security groups, association, everything is done. We got storage account, creation complete after OK. And it's creating BLOPs. OK, now it is trying to create virtual machines. So this is a very small snippet where we will be just seeing two VMs and these resources with subnets and NSGs formed. Okay, should stop at any time. So I think another couple of, uh, I mean, another couple, 20 seconds it, it should take, it should. And after that, so we can see 60 res 16 resources are added here. Uh, let's see, we can, so you can see AZ Goat resource group is completed. And what more we can see? Okay, so these are resources formed. We are able to create uh, VM uh, two VMs which have proper managed disk assigned to them, and uh, this is the storage account which is created. And if we <clears throat> see this storage account, it has created the containers as well and related file also, uh, block file also it has uploaded here. So, and for VM also, if we open one, we can see this is running. This has public address assigned to it. So everything is done through this automation script. So this is uh, the walkthrough of automation script, which I wanted to show you. And uh, there are some few things we need to add up there uh, that I'll show in roadmap. So this was an introductory demo for the setup script. Now we'll be uh, going through the uh, AZ goat scenarios. So we have three scenarios here. No metadata leaks, is it? And another is publicly exposed storage to a compromised database. And then we have cloud mal malfunction to range shell. Taking up the first scenario, no metadata le uh, leaks, is it? So the first part, uh, the first thought which will come to your mind is that Azure is not affected by uh, metadata leakage uh, by SSRF because they have a good um, policy uh, of header that every time whenever you will be querying metadata services, there should be a header of metadata true, then only you will get a proper response. But in this case, still we were able to get the metadata. So it's not the fault of Azure, it was fault of uh, <clears throat> insecure coding practice because of which there was heavy leak. So yes, to cover up my point, there is strict header requirement in metadata API and taking a proof, I can show you a pic of Jira. This was a research done on Jira. Jira was hosted on all of these environments and if you can see metadata, metadata leakage from host is zero for Azure. So let's take the scenario one. 
again so let's take a story so anna is working for a very prestigious firm and she has developed an extension which will be connecting which will be integrating some external connectors and um, she has developed some such kind of extension there and she gets a call from an uh, a friendly uh, attacker i can say friendly adversary and that's <laughs> and uh, that's a little funny term but yes she gets call from friendly adversary and he tells he or she tells that this uh, there's a big data, there's a lot of data is getting leaked and metadata is getting leaked and yes the person was able to perform a lateral movement and they were able to get access of their storage account of this organization which had some inform, uh, in, important data so uh let's investigate this case so first when we investigate this case uh i mean i will be also showing the demo it was found that it is vulnerable to ssrf and metadata header was enabled in code now when we open this code we can see so this is our main file if i open this code in az code let's see scenario 1 and we have this code in hello world let's see what's here so if you see this code in header this is there so what it was done that the person it was investigated out that okay this external extension was uh, this uh, connection was required and also because of that she has left one debugging information here where she wanted to check how uh if they are able to query the uh storage account through their managed identity uh, accounts or not so for that debugging this was left there so this is uh, so every time request will be made to that particular um, url this will get passed in the headers so this was a one debugging code which was left intact when that production code and when we see this so this this is that url where this uh where this uh, code was hosted and uh, if you can see this if you enter any uh, integration url just we can put google.com it's if you can see this is a proper ssr affair now if we go back and try to fetch uh, metadata details let's do that so let's see if we can find out compute id and other stuff related to Uh, or subscription id related to this uh, i'll also show what i have passed so this is uh, present in microsoft documents as well where we can find uh, data related to subscription id or other related things so when we perform submit so from here we were able to get subscription id now let's move back and what more we can discover let's see another thing we have uh, let's see if we can get managed identity token so this is for querying the rest apis of microsoft which is related to managed identity we can get token here access token now how we are going to use it so for this we have one script here so this script is inspired by carl forsen's blog uh, if you see this script this script is taking a particular token so this was my earlier generated token and this is this subscription id i'll just put this token once again for your view i'll modify this script okay so i think we have script ready what this script is doing it will be fetching the list of account uh, storage account and it will be fetching uh, token uh, sorry keys related to that storage account so let's run this script and see what goes so if you see it has this internal storage account which was private in nature and we can get the key uh, so let's check in storage explorer if we can go further let's try to connect to azure account okay
next so it has successfully added this connection here let's move to blob container see if we can access this file yes there is some important data and when we try to open it okay it's uh, taking some time to open this data oh. so yes we were able to replicate the scenario one how attacker has performed this lateral movement so this was one scenario uh, now moving on to the next demo so that's scenario two uh, so what we have this thing like uh, as i've all, uh, earlier discussed that we have publicly exposed storage um, is sometimes present but how it can compromise a database so let's take an example of another story here we have yummy foods and yummy food is uh, online food delivery um, company and they have developed some app they have they have put up some code on their blob storage and they want pen testers to review that code also their one of their focus point is that they have deployed azure sql uh, db there which is very restricted they can't uh, that db can't be rest, uh, i mean accessed from um, remotely through internet so the challenge is to access uh, azure C and sql server remotely so this because in azure we have restrict uh, this thing is restricted ip restricted only internal uh, app, uh, machines can access it so when uh, we investigated it so these were the things um, which attacker did for lateral movement they were able to uh, source code was revealing a blob storage url which was another blob storage url and that was publicly accessible it had some vm credentials which was in that network which had access to that sql uh, database and in entering into that vm they were able to get web.config file and through that they were able to get connection strings of that sql server and they used a script to connect to that uh, sql server and fetched customer record from there so let's see its demo uh, i'll again jump back to uh, another browser so this was the code which they have hosted in a blob file and if you can see here uh, we don't find any connection string here but this this code is somewhat uploading or downloading some kind of, some data to blob storage and blob storage url is given here this is the blob storage url and if we try to access it you can see that it shows the machine's detail now when we try to connect to it so this is a public ip let's use it go further so we are able to log in into it let's see if we can get a root access okay so it shows that tester is not a studio file and this incident will be reported uh okay let's see what more we can do let's go to their where directory www directory let's see what all they have so they have these many apps which are hosted here let's go to yummy food and we can see web.config here so when we open this web.config we scroll down we can see we can see a connection string is getting revealed here so what we are going to you, uh, do now we are going to use a script again it's uh, inspired by carl posen's blog and uh, i'll just show i've already copied the script here in its home directory just to save time we'll just open this script and you can see the same this is the database name so database uh, server so this is provided here we have populated all the values here 
username and password which we found here and we are trying to fetch one table from it which is customers we just want to see if it is able to fetch details of customers so let's run this script and when we run this script we can see okay these are the details of the customers which were stored in that particular database and it though even though it was restricted in nature but then also how attackers were able to perform a lateral movement and get these details out from it so this is uh, one step and uh, now coming to scenario 3 we have a uh, cloud malfunction to rain shell this you must have experienced most of the time in case of functions so we have a function here and which is um, we have we are having a function here which is which on exploitation is um, doing leakage of storage token and we are able to perf perform i can say we are able to get reverse shell uh, for this demo i'll be showing the restricted reverse shell so i'll just open my function if you see this function if i this is the url and we have to pass on this parameter q is equal to something so if i provide some improper value then it shows that this particular thing is not found but if i try to provide i have config this is very restricted this doesn't show much it will show that <clears throat> it will show that this this is not enabled i config is not ena enabled let's see what happens here so it shows i config is not found okay so let's put here env so there's a lot of data here you can see a lot of data so you can see that storage account name and its key related key you can see a lot of thing here so basic thing is th this this is a meet here so you can again try entering this data into storage explorer and you can get the detail but apart from that there are a lot of things about this uh, particular uh, host which is hosting this uh, function it is getting revealed what back back end they are using everything is getting revealed here so this is one thing and uh, i'll just take another example of uh, reverse shell I'll just be fast. So I for this particular thing, I need to open up my uh, the VM which I have started here. Let me connect to this VM. Although I don't have much time left, let me make sure I do it fast. so this was from my automation account this is another vm which i created just a second maybe some error here we can do one thing we can try to ssh okay let's open putty again okay so we have password password here and yes we have access to it let's start a shell on 443 because this particular port is enabled okay so we have started a shell now let's move back to our slide okay, we have copied this particular code let's change the ip also so 
So we are trying to get a reverse shell here. Uh, this is a Python one liner code, which we have used here to get a reverse shell. So I have already put the port as 443, just we need to change the IP. Let's see what happens here. Oh. Thing is epic, okay, all right. Let's move back to putty and see if it gets something. So it will get a restricted shell here. That is one thing. Let's wait for some more time. I hope IP I have provided is proper. So this was okay. Uh, all right. So let's pray to demo god. Oh, demo god, <laughs> make this demo work. All right. This is stuck, but however, we used to get it earlier. Um, in the meantime, I'll just move on to the next slide just to cover up this time. So this is the roadmap uh, which we were planning for. So which we have planned for the phase one is the planning and creation of scenarios. Uh, and phase two is uh, and the phase two is the automation of whole setup which we are performing right now and we want to make it open source so that whole security community and everyone can use it. So also we are planning to integrate some privilege escalation scenarios which are related to subscriptions or managed identities and key vault access related scenarios. Plus we are working on Azure queue scenarios. Uh, we want to research more on the Azure APIs. Uh, and phase four, we want to regularly update with the, the as you go with the new scenarios. And we want to maintain, I mean, we will be maintaining and fixing the issues which are uh, reported for AZ Goat. So we will be working on that. So before parting note, just uh, let's have a look. Okay, somehow this is not getting us here. Maybe I gave the wrong, okay. So for parting notes, we, uh, I'll take up the moral of the story is that eliminate the root cause if it is in your control. So the thing is that we know that uh, in the three scenarios, we know the root cause. So one was debugging code was enabled. And even though we remove the debugging code, still it is vulnerable to SSRF. I mean, we need to fix the SSRF as well. So that is the root cause. Uh, then another thing is when we talk about Azure security, uh, Azure environment security, I should say. So there's a strong need for uh, Azure environment uh, related test bed where we can learn, practice, and uh, we can learn a lot there. So Web and AWS, as I've already told, they have dedicated test beds developed. And uh, yes, we we there should be more encouragement on Azure environment, I should say, not just Azure security, it should be Azure environment related security as well. So there should be something more related to that. And when we talk about action items, so yes, there is call for collaboration. It's a, it's a if some of you want to, if any of one of you want to collaborate in this AZ code, please do let me know. Uh, we, we can make it more exciting. And uh, yes, there can be very good scenarios here which from which people can learn a lot. And yes, we can develop more scripts which can uh, help them to uh, perform pen tests better. So any questions or feedback, do reach out to me on this email address. And for the last time, let's see, there is one timeout error here. All right. So maybe there is something wrong with this reverse shell script. Uh, comment, a comment said that there was a, a wrong IP in the reverse shell command. Maybe you can. Oh, what, okay. Uh, I have double two at the it. beginning of the address. Maybe All not. right. Mm, maybe, yeah, but this was. I think this is correct yeah. one, right? Two zero. This one I have started. I have changed it here while I was copying. Ah. But yes, it it was working. I'm not sure. Maybe. Uh, for, for there's something related to 
Okay, all right, I got it. It's because of NSG. That NSG is not enabled for 443. That's why it's not working. If I enable that port, it will start working. If I add that inbound port, that will start working. Because 443 inbound connection for 443 is not enabled. That's why it didn't work. I think it should work now. Oh God. All right, it should work now. Uh, that's what I think because of NSGs, this thing wasn't working. Yes, we have this restricted shell now. So if you can see, we can ls and I mean, we can we can see which directory we are in. A lot of things are here. Uh, we can move out of this and we can see what more things are present here. So this was that scenario three demo, which was pending from my end. Uh, that got successfully completed. So thanks demo got for that. And uh, this is a reference which I have uh, provided here from where, I mean, a lot of ideas we have, a uh, lot of research we have done for making this uh, test bed. And uh, at the end, I want to thank OVAS for giving me such a, a great opportunity to present in front of such a wonderful audience. Thanks a lot.